welcome back. In today's video, I wanted to uh, take a bit of a break from some of the psychological, motivational and other types of videos that um, I've been doing and uh, take a bit more of a practical tack. One of the things I remember most from my childhood that was of, the cicadas are pretty loud so if you can't hear me, excuse me for that. But one of the things that I really enjoyed most in my childhood was going fishing with my dad. It uh, gives me some of my fondest memories and it set me up with some life skills that meant that when push comes to shove, I can feed my family. I have the skills and the knowledge to take a fishing rod and a small bit of bait and put food on the table. Now, there's a lot of knowledge that goes into that and it can take many years, but you've got to start somewhere. Now, for a lot of blokes, they never learn how to fish. Maybe they didn't have a dad to do it or their dad was disinterested. Maybe they themselves never took any time for it. But one of the things I find really fascinating about fishing is it's not just a relaxing pastime. There's also a sense of accomplishment, a sense of masculine achievement. And I think that validates us as men. It means that when we can put food on the table for our family and draw it straight from nature, there's something very primal about that. And I think that um, for men, it puts us in touch with our ancient heritage as hunters. And uh, that idea of being a successful hunter really does make us feel like we're contributing to our family, to our community, and it gives us a sense of validation that we're not worthless. And when you're a divorced dad, scrambling to uh, regenerate your identity, worthlessness is an emotion that comes up a lot. So learning how to fish should have been your dad's job, but if for whatever reason you haven't learned how to fish, I'm urging you to learn, not just so you can teach your children how to stay in touch with nature and how to be connected, but also how to feel more validated as a man, how to be able to interact with nature, how to relax that makes us feel good about ourselves and that also helps us stay connected to the natural world and our place in it as men. So enjoy today's video and uh, thanks a lot to my friend Mario for uh, having a great weekend with me and um, ensuring that we catch some really good ones. So um, till the next video, we'll call. So how do you pick a spot on the beach, Mario? Oh. Uh, the key is to look at the colour of the water, number one. So you want to try and pick a gully. So yeah. you can actually see towards the middle part of the beach. Yeah. Uh, there's a little area where the waves aren't exactly breaking. Yeah. And what's the benefit of a gully? Well, the benefit of a gully is uh, the fish tend to gravitate towards the gully. That's typically where they feed. Right, so the big ones so chase the little there's ones. There's water washing from the sandbanks in and out of the gully. There's a rip. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, there's mixing of the food and, and the fish just, uh, there's, there's a greater level of feed in the gully. A lot of foam that they hang around there too? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Why do you think it is that a lot of blokes today don't know anything about fishing or... Good question. Alex. ...survival, the outdoors, they wouldn't know a beach if they... Good question. Landed just, on one. Just uh, trying and uh, broadening your horizons, thinking outside of your comfort zone, just doing stuff uh, that uh, maybe relax you. Learning new skill. Well, you're, you're a doctor, but what is it about fishing that makes you feel so good? Being in touch with nature, hanging around with the mate, of course, and. Uh, Enjoying the environment. I mean, look at this beauty, pristine exercise. There's lots of different types of lines that you can set up and uh, the ones that I've got on my rods today are the most basic and uh, 
useful lines that you can uh, that you can use. They go back a very long time. They've been used by fishermen all around the world, and uh, they're a tried and true method for catching a number of fish. Now, you could just run a main line, put a ball sinker through the centre of it, and a hook on the end of it, and that'll get you out of any sort of trouble. And you can fish with it. You can catch fish with it. But uh, the line, the rig I'm using today is called the Paternoster rig. Paternoster from the Latin for our father. In other words, it's a prayer rig. And, uh, and I'll show you how I've rigged it up. So the Paternoster line is basically a main line which has a couple of drop lines off each end. About 400 mil down each way. And a sinker about 400, 500 at the bottom of that. Now you can use all different types of hooks, different types of baits. The uh, the drop line, I'll show you how to tie that if I lose this rig. Um, and uh, it's a very easy line to put a, uh, a hook on. And it's one that you can catch a lot of fish on. Rods I'm using a classic beach rod. This one I've had for many years. My dad gave it to me. A bit worse for wear, but I've caught hundreds of fish on this thing, and uh, it just keeps on giving. It's a spinner that I've got on here, right-handed spinner. Again, most popular type of reel in the world. You've got Albi reels, you've, you've got other sorts of reels that are also very good, but uh, this is the most common one used around the world. Uh, the rod itself is a good uh, four meters, and that's a pretty typical, pretty good beach rod. The other secondary rod I've got here is what's commonly called a, uh, a river rod and river rods are shorter usually two to three meters they've got more flex in them but again like the other one you can tie a pattern off the line to it uh, a bit more whip a bit more flex in it um, not maybe ideal for the beach but uh, definitely estuary and river fishing but it'll do and on this one you see i've got a little bit of a lighter sinker a lighter ball sinker um, in the surf, you want a little bit more weight, but remember when you're fishing, especially in the surf, a couple of rules. The lighter the line, the better if it does the job. So having big, thick, tight, uh, heavy lines won't necessarily result in more catches. You want the thinnest line, thinnest filament line, thinnest diameter possible to catch the fish you need. Second, same principle applies to the hook. You want the smallest hook necessary to get the job done, not the biggest. The smaller the hook, the better, as long as it gets the job done. You need to look out for gutters and holes where the fish are gonna play, and uh, you need to be an aggressive fisherman. Don't just cast your line and wait there all afternoon. You need to walk up and down, look for other opportunities. So uh, being a passive fisherman means less fish, okay? You can see Mario's working the beach. He started from the beginning of that gutter and he's working his way along. He's got one line sitting in there. Hopefully he's gonna catch something soon. But uh, we'll be working up and down this beach. So you can see how I've rigged this up. I've put a piece of pilchard, hooked it through, made sure it goes through the blue part of it and, uh, and then down across the spine and through the back. The sandworm. I've just threaded it along. You can see that. I've just threaded that sandworm through and uh, it'll just dangle there. You don't need a long piece, maybe about an inch and a half, and that'll do the job. So I've rigged up both of my lines like that. Now, you don't have to be precious about it. What all these uh, experts keep telling you uh, isn't necessarily true. It doesn't it's not rocket science. So this one, you can still see a little bit of a hook showing through there. Don't worry about it. Um, the meat's there. The fish will be happy if they're hungry and they'll go for it. So. Um, Let's see, I've got a combo. I've got a, a bit of pilchard and I've got a little bit of worm. Let's see which ones they go for. The other thing I didn't mention too is um, we're here this weekend in the lovely Bendelong on the south coast of New South Wales. And uh, what makes for good fishing? Well, the tides have to be right. So basically for most types of fishing, fishing the rising tide is the best way to go. There is some exception to that, but generally you want to go on a rising tide preferably around peak, and so that'll give you a, a chance to catch the fish when they're looking for fresh detritus and rubbish that's been stirred up out of the sediment. The second thing to look for is to make sure 
that you're there roughly at dusk or at dawn. Those two times of the day seem to work best for fish. And the third thing to consider is the moon. Now, it's a, a full moon at the moment, and that's usually considered a better fishing time for most beach fish. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. So when all of those three planets align, high tides, at dusk or dawn, with a full moon, chances are much greater than otherwise. So keep those tips in mind. Another useful tool on the beach is to take a PVC pipe about a metre long, cut it at an angle off one end so that you can uh, stab it into the sand and use it as a rest for your fishing rod. It's a really great way to uh, have multiple rods going at the same time, so uh, something to consider as part of your integral kit when you're doing some beach fishing. Once you've cast your line in, try and make sure you keep the line tight. Uh, that means that if fish take the bait, they can snag themselves on the hook very easily. If it's a loose line, it means the fish can sometimes steal the bait without uh, getting stuck on the hook. So always keep your lines tight, keep an eye on them, and uh, that'll uh, give, increase your chances of catching fish. Now just looking at this line, You'll notice there's a very slight bob to and fro. That's obviously wave action when it's uh, rhythmic like that. Sometimes it'll go down and it'll suddenly whip back up. Often that's the uh, sinker being stuck on, on a sandbar and, and suddenly released. That doesn't mean there's a fish catching. There you go, you just saw that. So it's often been said by anglers that uh, lead is the great enemy of fishermen. The heavier your line is, the uh, more risk there is. Now you just saw a little nibble there on that, hopefully. Um, a lot of fish are sensitive to too much lead, so uh, the, the more lead you put on, the more you risk the fish noticing that there's something wrong with the, uh, with the bait. So only use as heavy a sinker as you absolutely need to get the job done. Further to that subject of uh, movement of the line and the, uh, the rod, one of the things my dad first taught me when I was learning how to fish was don't grab the rod and rip it the second you feel a bite. You've got to let the fish catch itself. And uh, that's one of the most difficult impulses to master when you're a beginner fisherman. As soon as you feel a nibble, you, your urge is to grab the rod and rip it and, and start pulling it in. The truth is that if you've got a good hook, a good sharp hook, and it's well baited, the fish will catch itself. And all you need to do is bring it in carefully. So uh, that's an important tip. You know, Don't just rip straight into it as soon as you feel a bite. Let the fish catch itself. You'll know that you've got a bite, either it'll go hard, or, um, or you'll feel a sudden few dips of the rod going forward. Now remember, quick dips forward often mean that there's a bite. Quick dips coming back up usually mean the sink is releasing from a sandbar. So don't confuse the two. fellas, get your rig right, cast the line in, catch a fish, fresh your kids, be a legend. Go for it, go fishing. So here's another thing worth mentioning, this uh, little whiting that I just caught, I caught it on a small suicide hook, where normally if you read all the textbooks they tell you you should be using a long shank hook which has a longer uh, hook and a curve to it. But uh, that's the thing about fishing, you can catch anything anytime. Uh, all depends on what's going and what's hungry at the time. So, uh, like I said before, don't be too precious about it. Just get out there. You're never going to catch a fish if you don't get a line in the water. So, uh, just get it going and learn as you go. What's called a Mario fish. It's a big, ugly North, North Sydney one. 
<laughs> Happens to the best of them. One of the things I get asked is, how far should I cast? And uh, there's a lot that you can say about that. I'm just watching my line. I think there's a couple of nibbles on that. Now I've generally got a longer rod, the four meter one I mentioned before, which I use to cast over the breakers into uh, the deeper channels. And this shorter river rod I normally use to cast a little bit closer. That way I'm canvassing both the deeper and the more shallow water. Obviously the heavier the sinker, the further you can cast. But uh, the problem with that is the more lead you've got on your line, the less sensitive your line is. And uh, some fish are really sensitive to that, so you've got to be careful. But uh, the truth is, you know, you've got to play with casting further, casting closer, and uh, it's all a big lucky dip, really. Another beautiful day on the water. Rod in your hand, fish biting. Doesn't get much better than that. That was a Got another big flathead. You see that? You see the bite? Had a nice tug. Went nice and strong. I let him hook himself. You can see the hook. It's through his mouth. That's a beautiful flathead. Beautiful eating. Beautiful. Just watch the spines. Don't get yourself stung. The venom in the uh, the dorsal fin and uh, and in the uh, the side the pectoral fins can be very very painful. So uh, there you go. You saw that and uh, what a beautiful feeling. Wow. Go fishing. Tough one. There you go. So you're gonna watch that spine. That one. That one because it's full of toxin got venom in it and in the dorsal fins as well in the front here there's venom and also likely on the other side too I was stung as a kid once and it hurt like hell so I just start off with you can use the back of the mic if it's got serration Mario's got one eye on the rod. Yeah, I'm just paying attention to the reaction around. Right. The Let's conditions start. are getting a bit confused. We'll start at the cloaca. <coughs> Cut your way up. Have a look at what he ate last. Looks like he was pretty hungry. Can't feel much in there. Pull all that guts out. This 
this one's everything's hard on this one. I think your phone's run out of battery, so Ah, oh, no worries. Is it gone? There you go. Is it still on? It is, but uh, that's one clean flathead. Got, right. Just got to be rinsed in the surf now. Yep. Starting to bite, eh? What do you got there, Bud Mario? Very nice. One on the way and one already on the line. That's an immature Australian salmon. Nice size. What do you got there, Mario? I'm going to have to beat that lot of that out of my videos, mate. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Little Trevallis. Okay, Barbalan. Okay. What, what did you catch? Uh, looks like a little trevally. Bloody very good, mate. Big enough for dinner? Absolutely. We got plenty for tomorrow. Very good. So there you go, a bit of a weekend adventure fishing. Now I'll uh, put links to my tackle and equipment below so that if you wanted to uh, get yourself rigged up and ready to roll, um, there'll be some links there. I'll put up some uh, resources on the website as well for, uh, for you to be able to take the measurements and um, set up your own tackle. It can be a little bit difficult just from the video to know what to do. So uh, do visit the website www.creariusproject.com for a little bit more information on uh, getting started in fishing. There are lots of different places you can fish. We started off with beach fishing because it's pretty simple, pretty easy, but I'm looking at perhaps doing some, uh, some more interesting fishing adventures, so stay tuned. And um, any comments, please leave them below. Any recommendations for newbies just starting out fishing, leave them in the comments below. Let's help blokes get back into the ancient art of fishing teach their kids and uh, raise their self-esteem as men. So uh, till the next time, walk we'll talk. Cheers. Fire the 
Sata! <laughs>